actually, so I really want Seeker to challenge them. Yeah, right. and sort of just in terms of overall feel as well. You know, you're coming into this game one of the grand finals on the main stage. Who's got the easier to execute lineup? Easier? I mean, I think it's secret. Yeah, I, I would say it's secret. Like, I think Certainly. Tundra have to dodge bullets. Like, they have to dodge the tide lane. They have to dodge like the, the, the snowball from the lash and like how they're gonna get momentum. Yeah, I mean, my God is telling me Clement wants to break the curse. He is not here for second place. He's here to win. Okay, well, thank you very much, boys. Looking forward to having you join us for Game 2 Draft. But for now, just before the game, we're going to be able to head over to Slacks and hear from the coach. You look ravaged. Uh, my keyboard is not working. The action, we've got a, a very little special video here from Resolution, a bit of a pep talk uh, before this game begins. Let's hear what he had to say. There we go, some fantastic words there from Rezo, nice. smiles all around as well, very much Love ready it. for the game. We'll see how ready he is though, because uh, Tundra, they're going to find him here for this first yeah. bit of action. Trapped out by the shots, or maybe not, no, he can't quite get around, doesn't matter, he's fine. He's going to get hooked underneath the tower, Chris has just the animal, but Saxa was the first to get that first kill. Gets first blood for Saxa, but in return, Nisha will be able to pick up the kill on, onto nine there, off the back of that excellent hook for Chrysalis. Trade for Nisha, as you mentioned, he gets the kill, so we'll get that earlier bottle for the matchup mid. And yeah, let's look at all these lanes, how they're going to be broken down, right? We've got the Snaking. He's been playing this Mirana time and time again throughout this tournament. Four branches, strong laning items. And we've got this no, you know, this 33 tied with Socks on his hoodwing. Stuff. Something they haven't played too much yeah, as of late, but they used to play it a lot. Get a hook onto the tide, it'll be just fine. And yeah, there lots of physical damage coming out from this bottom lane. Something that I think can be sometimes deceptive. Well, I mean, look at that. Nisha's is kind of interested in getting involved in a bit of a chase there. Ooh. But uh, won't continue to take any more attention away from the middle lane or just be left to Chrysalis and Puppy to chase 33 down a little bit. Chrysalis, of course, having to be careful himself. So we'll see them settle here into the laning stage. And, you know, we've got to sort of talk about as well comments there from Owie before the game. Do you sort of like that approach? Game one of the grand finals. You leave oh, yeah. the OP I hero like in I just like to it. see if you can deal with it. You've got, you've got, no, you've got many it's, games to recover if it doesn't go great. You know, it's something that people always talk about with Puppy, right? What he does, he gives the team their heroes. If he beats it, then it's like, oh my god, you know, you kind of break a team strategy. So I think it's a really cool approach. And just looking at these lanes now, we have the Lich Pudge versus the Tide versus Hoodwink. Both of the bottom heroes on Secret starting with bringing up protections to deal with that physical damage to try to tank up because sometimes like we mentioned it can be a bit deceptive let's have a look at some of these lanes i mean overall who do you have the, the biggest concerns for anybody going to have a specifically tough time in these early minutes i'm looking at bottom to be honest with you i mean it depends on how much damage they're able to do with this like gosh plus this uh acorn shot but it's a lot of magical burst that could sometimes trip up a tide so let's see if 33 is able to hold up with it they are pretty limited on regen also but it tends to be you know the tundra approach not having too many tangos they like their mangoes a lot and this mid lane matchup in particular, you know, of course, Nine, one of the fantastic mid players to just mm -hmm. continue to bring these heroes in that nobody else will really consider playing mid. Here he is, of course, bringing out the Tusk once again in game one of the grand finals. Up against the Nisha Lesh track, though. So you've got to imagine on paper, this is not going to be too easy for the Tusk, right? He's got to be careful against Nisha. I think just because of that kill that Nisha gets, you know, the bottle being coming out so early. Otherwise, I've seen this Tusk actually do pretty decent in a lot of these matchups versus range. Yeah, I think Nisha, he's going to have a blast. So Chrysalis is going to be okay here. Spells on cooldown. 
some snacks are in 33, so no further chase, but a fair bit of a rash, keeping Crystalis pressured underneath the tower. Starts to get easier for Secret once they get the Frost Shield levels, which they now do have, so a lot of that physical damage resistance for Crystalis. But as we've seen so many times, Tundra, this offlane, these two, they're special together. There's something about them. Dyer's they even Dyer's even lane like matchups, you think they can't win, they sometimes end up just doing some type of crazy lane shenanigans and coming out ahead of it, so let's see how they do adapt. I mean, what are, what are some of the things that they do, do so well that kind of means that they, you know, countless times, they are the duo that's just winning out in this lane. It just feels like they always know how to trade a little bit better. Either they, tr I mean, they either trade or they just do these constant lane pulls, shenanigans with socks to just re-manipulating re where the lane positioning is, so. It's just a Tundra specialty. We're seeing Top also starting to have a bit of trouble as Ten Stappen versus these Enigmas. The Eidolon's building up. Crystalis. I mean, that, that bottom lane really... It, it's the lane very much, It's a case of, you know, how much do Tundra try and push for that kill on the budge? Yeah. Yeah, before Chrysalis is suddenly getting buffed up and able to turn around. You know, Saxer in particular has to be very, very careful how close he gets to the budge. From the top lane so far, uh, any sort of surprises here? No, not so much. I mean, the Eidolon spam, you know, it continues to happen whenever you are playing those carries. It's going to be affecting you a little bit. But Skeeter, he's holding his own, him and Snaking. They have kill threat constantly, too. The early point in net with that arrow combo. Something to look out for, especially on Zayats. Rezo, he's always got those Eidolons, so they have a lot of ways to protect and block arrow combos and stuff like that with the summons. Yeah, and all in all, in, in terms of the, the how good the game is for the Enigma, you know, how how good is it for Rezo? Is it going to be easy for him to have impact with the Black Hole, or is this going to be one of those games where it's, it's kind of everything else about the hero that's, that's going to have its strengths? It feels like that tends to be the story for the Enigma a lot of times, but if you look at his items that he's got queued up, you know, we did mention the Wraith Pack it, comparison. He, he wants to go He's going to go yeah. for the Black Hole plays I mean, and just play around his Malefice and stuns from a distance. Absolutely. I think it's something that we're all going to be very, very happy to see. Yeah. None of this sort of Wraith Pack rubbish, you know, we want the action, we want the Black Hole. Hey, if you look at the way the lineups can go at some point, there is going to be that lack of BKB disable, of course, for the Enigma. Sure, they're going to be able to sleep and reset and do these kind of fights that we see Tundra do a lot of times. We see a lot of teams do with Naga Siren, but could get to some points where you have to take these fights. Oh, he lands it! A little angle there! They've got the blast as well to slow Saxo down, but because the, the creeps are pushed in, tower hits will be tanked up by the wave, so Saxo are able to walk out. But uh, Chris has definitely shown so far, I don't think he's missed a hook, really. Every, every single one of them on, on point, so got to watch out for those down the road. But 33 is free farming, so that lane that we were taking a look at, they've actually been able to solidify for this tight under pretty nicely with Sox's harassment. And Chris is just staying kind of low, which is a bit scary. He could constantly yeah. be getting getting gone on. Love that oh, ring of health coming out to him, so likely to be consistently in a position where it helps a bit higher. Saxa will find himself he's on top of Chrysalis. They're trying to get aggressive on towards the Pudge. Saxa has the stick charges at the ready. Chrysalis, he's going to get the kill before he goes down. So they push for push for the kill there on the carry. I imagine something the Tundra's going to be pretty happy with. Oh, yeah. Saxa goes down, but all according to plan, I'd imagine, there for Tundra, taking down Chrysalis. Yeah, they just have, like we said, there's just such an interesting approach to the way they do it. Even the Blades of Attack being picked up early on 33, not going for any tanky items. This is a fighting build. Phase boots right away, trying to benefit off that Blightstone, any type of minus armor they can put onto this Pudge. And it worked. Yep. And this is sort of the classic death you see at yeah. this sort of moment from supports in that bottom lane. Me and Saxa can get over to mid, get the bottle top back up. Voila. Definitely the sort of trades that secret, you're not going to want to allow Tundra to, to get against you anymore in this landing stage. Be a bit more careful on when they make the calls to commit for kills. Top. Not enough to chase. Catch on bottom, though. Constant aggression on these side lanes. Once again, Crystal is trying his best to, to trade, but especially when it's 33 that's the one on top of him. Not at a point where Pudge just has enough damage to kind of bring down the tide. Tide's able to threaten them. Back up in the top jungle, Zayats is snaking. Snaking a bit might of a one-on-one. -on -one. Same time in the mid, Nisha. He's got a decent amount of mana to try and run down nice. Dick charges are there, though. Nine far enough under the tower to survive. But back in the jungle, snaking will win the battle of the supports. Yeah, you see that, that stat build for Nisha really working. Nisha. Very low around this mid lane. There's a punch. As Snacks is coming to try and help out with the setup. He's got a bit of a bottle charge and a fairy fire. It's not enough to keep him alive, though. Nine and Saxa take him down. Saxa coming out with some top moves already from so the intentional death bottom helping out the mid and once again being around that mid lane uh, around these power runes to get that that extra bit of power that nine needs to get a kill and now look at bottom that physical damage crystallis and it's too much bushwhack. i mean saxa he's in every single bit of place that they need him to be and it's a big hit of course with that three points and anchor smashing the, the blaze of attack on top of the face but that's a hefty right click coming out from 33 off the back of the anchor smashing 
I mean, it's, it's, this hoodwink is it's looking kind of spooky, yeah. Fog. He's, he's all over the place and he's making big moves. And it's into, like, secret. They did the preparation, right? They had to bring a protection Dyer's to kind of try to protect his physical. Attack. They had the frost shield, but it's not enough. This build, 33, going for that Wraith Pact, more than likely rushing it. He's going to be able to keep his sustain down there, too. Shoots up like yes. an excellent angle. angle there for snaking, sneaking round through the trees. Catches Rezo by surprise. Oh, really? Tundra getting kills up and down the map right now. The Eidolon's not quite enough to finish snaking off. Maybe they can still find him in the jungle. They can and just off to the side of the lane. They will be able to take him down in return. But very much we're seeing sort of the, the support from Tundra really just enabling the, the cause already in this early landing stage, getting them that extra bit of a bonus off the back of these kills. Six to three, one K lead at the moment for Tundra. Really clever moves, really clever positioning as well too. And we're probably going to see more of these rotations, 15 seconds until we do have that power rune coming out. So eyes on Soxa, see if he does make the rotation. Even filling up again for Knight. So I want him to be as fight ready as possible. Three heroes collapsing on both sides. Trying to, to get the chance to trap him in there with the shards. Won't quite find it. We'll see eight minute power in where it's going to be. It's going to be top and oh, secret. This one. time they'll be able to hold on to it. Nisha able to grab it. Hey, Noble coming out the way of Zayas. Only going to set up for the stun for Nisha. He's ready to run down nine. Nine has got the help for Saxon. Saxon with a pushback. Hold them back, but they'll still be able to run down nine. At this time, secret, they'll bring in the extra firepower required around this mid lane. They're going to make sure that this time round, Nisha, he's not left alone. Right, there's just so much burst damage from both sides. We're going to be seeing heroes just getting popped left and right. But after the start of the laning phase, it's looking really nice for Tundra, even though they were up against some of these could be tougher lanes. They've done excellent versus them. The Naga Siren farming perfectly fine versus the Enigma. Even getting that early kill is a big deal. So Secret, they want to start getting a little more active. Yeah, early little smoke here from Nisha. Feels to like join Zayats and Rezo up top around this point where level six is on nine for the Enigma. Rezo. He's got a black hole if he finds the chance to turn and use it. Nine is going to try to go for it, but Rezo is ready. The six is there. Black hole got down. Now, Saxon's got to be careful getting himself back into the trees, back behind the tower, but Zayas, he's still Zayas sweeping around. They may power. still find he's him. Under attack. See how much they want to try and search. It's going to be difficult to find him. He's pretty deep, but Nisha, very resilient, continues oh, he's to go him. further and further into the trees. They'll catch him as well. Three dead on the top lane. Tundra, the ones to start that play onto resolution. It was a big risk to take. They were really banking on the fact that he was on his own, but he wasn't. The smoke from mid, secret, they catch him by surprise. Beautiful read, really. After these last few moments, Tundra getting all these moves that are working for them, secret, they strike back. Tundra, and also, I mean, they made this move. It's not the squishiest of heroes on the Enigma. With just these two on Tundra, they need a little bit more burst, so do have to be careful. And now he gets tower. Be really early blink on. Uh, yeah, early tower will definitely help fuel that purchase. Already pre-10 minutes and hitting these sort of objective timings. This top lane now, would you imagine if, if you're Tundra, how do you sort of start to, to slow down secret speed of and getting control of this half of the map? It's not going to be easy. They might have to just start making moves elsewhere. Maybe use the, the illusion just to scout things out, but it's not going to be easy for them to really just contest up versus Rezo now at this point. After dying once, it kind of dissuades you from really going up there until you do have like Sox having level six to have that extra bit of burst damage to follow up with the Tusk. Might look to start playing around 33, I'd imagine. He's the one who's having that incredible game. I believe he has the Vlads finished. So maybe looking to start pressure this, pressuring this tower down here. Of course, he has that Ravage good to go if he sees a chance to set up for a kill on Crystalis to get some extra health. They got the toss back onto Snake King. Doesn't stand a chance there against the amount of damage they've got. Back down bottom, having to hold back Crystalis. He's got the Vanguard. A bit hard to commit. Uh, they try to glyph for it, but does get the hook onto that. Siege. Uh, they're, they're bringing in a third hero. Nine is around. With nine diving in. Secret's full rotating now. And, and Tundra, you know, they sort of learned from, from the mistake up oh, top. Yeah. They don't want to try and push Radiant for these kills too much. They know that Secret at the moment, they are in full responsive mode. It's a pretty devastating lineup to try to commit into these kills too. And as we saw, that black hole, also Chain Frost for the Lich. Radiant's it can just turn any type of these tides. They're much, much more careful now. See in terms of positioning for the Tundra, they'll Leaves to that top lane here for the Marana. They just start jungling up. Skeeter scouting out with his illusions as well. They're going to constantly get cleaned up, though, seeing Zayats do that a few Radiant times. Middle tower is under See attack. if they're able to just continue to, to to enable space for Skeeter to keep up on the Naga Siren. So far, so good, of course. Has a, a solid 1,000 gold lead against Crystalis carrying here for Secret on the other side. Things are close. So, as like as Notel and Seb were saying, you know, the 
pace of the game for Secret, they probably want to accelerate things a little bit more. Tundra, whenever there's these low periods, they're pretty happy. Oh, they're yeah. not pressured. We're going to see if they can take down Chrysalis here with the three of them. See what sort of help he gets this time round. It doesn't look like there'll be enough to save him as Tundra. They'll get the kill. They strike again when they know that it's still at this point where Secret, they've probably not got the TPs back up. They just don't have the methods to respond when Tundra time their aggressive moves like that. This Hoodwink seems to just be the specialty, right? This burst damage and getting that six now. Radiant fortified their structure. Should be able to set up for this tower, finish it off. They still have Ravage too, so the threat. Secret. Look like they're gonna play on the other side of the map. Misha gonna start hitting mid. He pretty much has the bloodstone done. Top net worth. Misha. He's had many of these games where he's been at the top. And he'll have this, the whole, whole match. He'll have this bloodstone a bit before pressure. the Wraith Pact is going to come out too. So we've seen a couple times Tundra. They counteracted this bloodstone a lot because you just prevent how much damage it does. So you prevent Fire's how much healing. So if they do get that timing, drowning. Secret could start to take advantage of the map a little bit here. Bloodstone Fire's is done. So playing around this lash, it's going to be problematic. Down. Tundra might have some issues in these next few moments. They're going to have to bring the Tusk and the Hoodwink maybe in to most scenarios just to burst this lash down. We're seeing a Secret. They know how They're strong these issues at this moment. Oh, they yeah. smoke him up, Radiant's take him anywhere on the map. They outnumber Tundra, they'll have a very solid fight tower, on their hands, no doubt about it. Saxa in good position, the scan catches, up by the Moonlight. The scan as well catches the secret rotation. So maybe unlikely now the secret are going to be able to make this sort of jump of any sort of level of surprise. Quick turn with the bushwhack, Big make moves. sure that there's no further jump over towards Saxa. And Saxa immediately ready to turn the trap sides in the shards. Sets up for both the arrow and the sharpshooter to bang on target, take down the kill. That burst from a distance, you don't really need to commit too much of anything. And now Secret, their rotation ends up not working, not getting them anything big. Does show that the Bloodstone is finished though, so I think Tundra, they're gonna keep tabs of that. Sit back, farm a little bit, wait until they have an opportunity to actually catch this Slash when he's split away from his team. And Skeeter, he's still doing fine. No, still loving life. Things are not too problematic, even though he has that death that they had going for the Enigma. He still has pretty good timings on his items. Absolutely, yeah, he knows that when Secret try and poke at the rest of his team down there on the bottom half. This whole area of the map mm -hmm. opens back up a little bit more for him. You can see the wall control. It's you know, too bad at all for them. There's not any deep vision from Secret around this area. So Tundra pretty happy to continue to just hold this area for Skeeter to keep the farm up and stay up there towards the top. Only a couple of hundred behind Nisha's farm. They've got the Wraith Pack down no now too, so they probably can look to just fight back into this last strike. They do need to just watch out of the big ultimates that are in there too. The Lich plus that black hole. Be careful how far they overcommit versus Secret's pretty tanky lineup. Zayats. Zayats. As we've seen many times, you've got to be careful how you try and poke towards Tundra. When Nine's around, he's just trapping you in the shards every single time you step up alone. Nisha, he's hasted. got that haste rune. We'll see if he's able to chase down anything with turn. Nice little sidestep there from Nine. Make sure that he doesn't get caught out by the stun. Tundra's back under the tower, and Nisha won't be getting any kills today with this haste. Yes. I mean, they're watching him, though. I mean, they know that the haste is about to come to an end. Whoop. Again, some excellent dodges from both sides here. Last minute or so, Nisha making sure the arrow doesn't catch him by surprise. Dyer's middle they need more heroes there. If they're going to go for some type of ravage play, they need to go for those chain stuns if they're going to try to get Nisha. Very tanky, 1800 HP with the Bloodstone. Say that that is the thing as well, though, for Tundra. If they try and play with their ult secret, they'll very they'll much be ready it. to respond with their mm -hmm. own ultimates. Both teams having huge team fight ultimates to drop. See in the middle, Nisha. This is time again. He's on his own. Pop the bloodstone charges. But uh, Tundra, they're just able to blow him up. A bit of a, a rare situation there where Nisha was alone. A Tundra, they make sure they don't miss out on that opportunity. They make the move immediately, and, and nobody else is around for secret. No, he didn't have any help. Exactly. And they dropped the Wraith Pack down. So there you see, even though he popped bloodstone, he has all this damage. Coming up. It's actually not that much damage, nor that much healing. No cares if they're gonna commit rapids there, it's perfect. Should be a, a free tier one tower, I'd imagine they have the fortification. We'll see if he could try and force a fight. There's still 10 seconds, no Nisha. Look at the vision control as well, too, from Tundra. They have Ward on high ground and are watching everything right now. Now they're back off for now, respecting the fact that Nisha is soon to be back up. But the damage certainly done to this tier one, incredibly low. Next push will take it off the map. Secret, as soon as Nisha's back in play. Good. Let's try and find some, some sort of move around him. This time round, making sure that they're in position to enable the Lesh and not allow him to get caught out alone. That's a, the biggest thing, right? They have to start playing as much as possible around Nisha and try to slow down Skeeter because all these moments ticking by, this Naga Siren just getting all the free farm in the world. Manta's finished, it has an arcane rune, so he's going to be able to push out these lanes freely. He's keeping all these lanes shoved in, so it's hard for Secret to really make a move without them getting caught themselves. 
And yeah, those teams that deep vision, Tundra, I mean, having these deep wards that haven't been taken out is a big deal right now. 4k lead for Tundra. Motion. You say taking over the map with the Moonlight Shadow. Yeah. So they can catch Rezo alive. Rezo senses something's up there. He is squishy now. I mean, he has not built any HP items whatsoever. 1,000 HP. They have a plethora of burst damage. Yeah. Scary place. Tundra, they won't hesitate to dive if Nine's able to set up the shards into the trees. He's gonna try for it, see what he can find, and he finds him. It's a perfect trap. Look at the first whack in as well. Rezo! Getting taken down behind his tier 2 once again, and Nine just continuing to be bang on target every single time with these shards. And this is pain, I mean, look at the moments, 5k gold lead now. Crystals, he hasn't been able to find much of anything after the laning phase. They're making all the space in their skeeter, and they're getting kills out of it too. Now they need to slow Tundra down somehow, to, to make some sort of fight happen around their own ultimates. Set the team by up for Nisha to be able to burn through these enemies with this incredible amount of damage he can do as a left. I'm just, I mean, they're keeping all the lanes pushed in. Look, Snake can go to the scary lane lane top. He's gonna push that one out quickly. Mid's pushed in, bottom's pushed in. Skeeter's already starting to look to cut some waves. Okay, maybe suicide, some illusions, but looking to cut some waves. Yeah, pressure on the map. It's too much right now for secret. Just getting information on who's sort of still sat back here in the base. They know the res is only just stepping out, so they can sort of plan for the movements of this Enigma and make sure that they're ready to, to prepare for any sort of jump the secret tries to make on them. It looks good. More and more dead. Chris, this is really hard. Very far up the lane. And you can see Tundra, they're a bit hesitant. They know that the aim is going to play aggressive like that. Chances are that the rest of the secrets there, so that came up. Super Warrior, wherever step up. As soon as they see anything, all the 33 is just knocking on a tier 2 bottom at this time. Getting close to his pipe as well, so all this damage mitigation for the Lash. I mean, it's starting to get online. The amount of pressure Tundra can apply. We've seen them in the boys that they have to do with it. The drops they normally enter in with. 33's tied, just being able to sit down here, he's going to split the map up with his position. It's just a whole lot of everything that he could have to deal with right now. Towers just continue to get hit. 33 just knows he's free down here. He also has that ward back up. He has that skeeter near and near. Tundra, he's playing on that map beautifully. And yeah, yeah, they built it. They got that shard early on Sasa, so that first damage that we were talking about, they're going to have so much of it to take out this flash, to take out that tech damage. Yeah, the lanes are starting to get up against the red and knock us out of problem. Very much so in the network. So far, not really being able to use this. The power of the power of the power is still very much behind me. Here is the problem. We see underneath these things that touch on Tundra. Tends to be a big, a big thing, thing that Tundra's going for. The 
I vibrate the rates back easy. You can kill the main slayer, so really cute. I'm gonna be all through this. I can land last right completely. I land on that magical damage. So if he just gets an angry smash, if he gets that main slayer fight on them, how are they gonna be able to bring down our targets? Especially that Naga Siren who's gotta have his heart pretty soon. Oh, a moment here. Minutes, Sandra. Getting, getting further, 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 further ahead. ahead. Very, Very much feeling the control they have on the game. Just early on as well. 22 minutes in. 8k lead. Yep, yep. And they even have down 9. We got, got the Orchid coming out. Look, it's a fun and a loser. We are we alright? Yeah, they, yeah, they, they also have 9. He's gonna be going for a standard custom build. He's gonna be that straight physical damage burst also, so. I have and had everything gone through here, here to be able to take down, down focus fire the punch, focus fire the lash, reduce, reduce their damage, and, and take objectives. Yeah, that's the big thing, too. Allow them to get approached approach a little bit easier and those powers. powers. I really, really, really very much is a case of even through, even through, through that bloodstone blood heal, Tundra, they, they will kill Isha so quickly. It's a secret response, it has to be immediate with their sort of counter initiations in terms of their black, black holes and yeah, yeah. stuff. I mean, it's 20, 22 minutes and there's only two flesh that I have never position you want to be on a touch. Chris, Chris Lutz, he's got Ags done. Let's, let's see what he's going to be able to do with this. I'm on the mid there. Plus 33, this is not an easy kill. Very, very tanky. Very, very tanky. Oh, very I mean, they have to. I don't think they're getting that kill. They've done that. Before he drops the pipe, before he drops the rate pack, so I'm sure. I mean, get out of that. That's the only way they kill him. They've got to do it quick, they've got to do it safe, they've got to use the black hole in situations like that. I'll take him off the map, and it will at least sort of give them the bit of PCC, maybe for the 30 seconds. Not knowing that Tundra, they won't have the tie by fight, but nonetheless, so Tundra, they're still that far, but they'll, they'll definitely still go for a quick kill. Tied or not. More than enough damage, probably. There it is. Some stacks for nine. Lotus, Lotus. Now, now done as well for Nisha, so a little bit of an extra way that he can try and prepare himself for the fight. Give him a bit of a better shot of me being blown up. Some of the targeted abilities from Tundra. Yep. So to protect him also, if there's like a snowball, he can even get inside the snowball if they play it a little bit perfectly. He can also dispel the boomerang buff. Or beep up, that is, which amplifies all that damage. Nisha, this bottom two is so scary, surely. That's a secret, unless... They can ensure that Tundra put off from diving, and they will go to get back, Chris, as he hits the hook! Grabs back nine, before Skeeter's able to do anything to save him. Sort of freeze the rest of Secret there with the song. Good, good catch on to nine there, Secret. Coming in with some level of response now to the moves from Tundra. It's definitely not as smooth sailing it has, as, as it has been for the last 10 minutes. Secret able to slow him down a little bit, bit by bit. Yep, yep. And now they have to blink on the tiny, so an actual initiator rather than just forcing Razzo to be that one to jump in with Black Hole. Get themselves back on the map. Every time they do kill one of those heroes, it feels, it, it feels pretty massive, at least for Secret, but in contrast, it doesn't seem like they care too much. I mean, it's, it's, it's just the it's Naga Siren, right? You know, Skeeter, he doesn't care if he sees a hero or a teammate die every now and then once a minute, just one off on their own. As long as he's still hitting the creeps, he is happy. Top of the net worth, and indeed with his heart, you can see Skeeter. And him and his illusions, it's not going to be easy to deal with. Sort of the main way to deal with it in terms of the Pudge and the Lesh Rack. We know that Tundra, they can kill these heroes. It's underneath the tier 2 mid. They're looking towards Crystalis. Skeeter, he's ready to come in. As they go right in on top of him. Nisha will turn up for the fight. Ooh, not able to charts. make any sort of move in time to save. And Crystalis goes down. You see 33, he's ready to just waltz right underneath the tier 2 as well. Sides so will jump over the toss back. They are getting nice pretty low. He's able to get the... The snowball off in time, Ravage there for 33 ensures the Nine's got the space to step back. As Zayats will fall, the bushwhack from Saxa finishing him off. Secret trying their best to, to deal with this team fight. These, these dives, this aggression that Tundra is performing. Most times, 9 out of 10, they're not able to deal with it. No. They're not able to stop them from getting what they want. Tundra, they'll push down mid, take down this tier 2. Everything continues to just being ticked off the list here for Tundra. This Skeeter Naga is just way too farmed, really, for them. To, once he shows up to the fight center, oh my god, we do not have enough damage to go through 3,000 HP. It's gonna take them quite a while, and it's into Wraith Pack, and it's into Pipe, and also we saw th the, our beautiful Observer point out an extra Cloak purchased up. I, he is gonna be going back for the Mage Slayer, as we mentioned. He was queuing up Blink for a moment, but yeah, just really looking for all that damage mitigation, making sure that Skeeter will probably never go down unless he gets caught by absolutely everything. 
up for secret. Next few moments, pretty difficult for them to look for these fights. Multiple blink daggers. Do you see even Puppy gets a blink? They need any type of follow up. They need the big burst, right? If they catch one or two heroes in a black hole, they need absolutely everything. It's, it's a lot of weight on resolution. It is. He's got to do something incredible. We get the toss back here on a snaking, but Puppy's on resolution. He's going to use the black hole. Only, Only one. catches snaking, though, and the song's out. Tundra, they're able to reset the team fight. Puppy goes down. Zayat's also the fall. As they'll lose Snaking, but they get to once again. Tundra just proving at this stage to be almost impossible for Secret to fight into. Tough position to use Black Hole. Pre BKB, even to all these stuns, into Song. I mean, he must be close to the BKB, right, Reza? Getting closer. I mean, he bought the Shard, he bought the Lens, so he has delayed it quite some time. So. And Tundra now, they probably are like, okay, well, no Black Hole. We can yep. probably look for Roshan. Straight to Roshan, indeed. They know that there's going to be no chance of Secret heading out to this area of the yep. map. They kill it fast with Riptide, with Deso, with Gush. See all that minus armor coming into play on top of the Orchid. Secret. They are reacting though, bringing four heroes. Scan is going to catch them. See if they can get any sort of fight going here. It's not easy. There's no black hole to rely on. They'll still take straight into the fight. Here. Chris, as he wants for it. Snowball's going to be there for now. Gets them over towards Nisha. They're trying to step back, but Nisha getting up a good amount of damage this time. Out of the team on the shot shooter comes in, takes down Zayas. Chris is trying to stand his ground with his dismember. The force nine back to safety. Roshan falling low. Chris was also having to back away. Is 33. He's trying to finish off the Rosh Puppy and Nisha. They're stepping into the pit as well, but nine heads in Snowball. They get the round again at the same time. Rizzo tried to jump in to steal the Aegis, but nine already picks it up. Three dead on Secret. They'll take the Aegis quickly out the hands of nine. But Secret, they're getting chased back away from the pit. Very much felt like a bit of a last ditch attempt there from Secret to try and stop Tundra, but they couldn't take the fight around the Roche pit. It's four dead. Nine continuing to chase. We'll see Puppy able to blink out just in time. It's a good fortune that he has that item there. I mean, it's wild how much damage is reduced there. In most situations, if there's not a pipe, if there's not a was so clumped up and they just still didn't still, die. Look, look how much they only... I'm, I'm saying only because when we've seen these pudges with, on these leshes, when they're able to stick on targets, three heroes inside that, you would probably see some 10,000 worth of damage or something. But look at this. The damage mitigation completely protecting everybody there. Can't handle this Secret. They really had to go all in for, yeah. to make a move like this. And they certainly do. They go straight into the pit and of course having to try and fight Rezo doesn't have at, his black hole back up. Look at the micro too, right? The Wraith Pack. Look, he pops it and sends it up north to kind of hide it away Good. from everybody. So Secret, they're panicking to try to kill this thing and meanwhile they're all just dropping lower and lower. Yeah. Great plays from Nine. The Snowball initially to dodge the Chain Frost with his team and then Snowball to kind of guarantee that they can get up that Roshan. Beautiful plays from Tundra. Masters of the team fight. They are seeming unstoppable here so far in this game. One 18k lead. And it's also, you know, Ravage, it wasn't up until that exact moment Nisha. as well, too. Stepping up in the mid, they've got the arrow connection. He's already used the Bloodstone here, look at the Lotus Orb off in time. A little bit of safety in his own snowball, but it's only going to tear him far away from the safety of any of his teammates as Nisha. Will get slowly but surely taken out, Puppy as well to fall, Zayas caught out by the net. It's going to be three dead on Secret. We'll see how much further they want to play this one out. It is Grand Finals after all, but this game one, it just looks like there's very few answers at all to what Tundra's doing right here. And it's versus that Lesh. They gave the Lesh. They had an idea, they had a concept, and it's working beautifully. Radiant structures are fortified. Full control of the game. I mean, 33. As they, you know, how we ended it at the end there. You know, talking about how important the tide is, how good he is on this hero, and we're seeing it 4 1 and 15. Even without the Ravage, we see the effects he's able to do from start to finish of this game. Those Tundra. We've seen many, many times before in the games that they play. When they have this sort of lead, they'll ever so careful not to allow any opportunity for it to slip away Radiant's from them. So they'll back off from the push for now. Interesting to point out also, Skeeter did buy the shard as well. So feels like they're really understanding this. Limit the damage. You know, this is going to heal for 40%. They're reducing the damage that's coming out from the Pudge and Lash. So how are they going to kill these, these big beefy targets? They right? have to catch them split up. But as we've seen, it's it's very, very few situations where Tundra, especially at this moment of the game, they choose to sort of fall back into positions that allow them to get caught one by one. Always playing around each other perfectly. Ah! Look. Trying to get a rest one 33, but he has got the Ravage. He'll pop it, and now there's the jump on Nine just straight in. Takes him out, Rezo, he has got the Black Hole up onto the two of them. But do they have the damage? Chain Frost is out, the BKB's already out for Nine and Skeeter. That was a nice two-man black.
attack all, but there wasn't any follow-up. But now Tundra, it looks like once again, they're setting up for the cleanup. They've got the catch on Tunisia. Bushwag will trap him against the tree. The arrow for Snake, he keeps him locked down. He'll try and step back, but Tundra, the full five of them, chase him down. He'll go for the TPR. He won't make it. Everybody dead on secret. Tundra, they're ready to resume, pushing down the mid. Radiant middle barracks. Get it seems like they they're just way, I mean, this time they're way too far ahead, but they're always just, like you mentioned, Radiant everyone's always barracks. playing around each other. This time, Ravage is at Radiant the ready. 33 not even coming close to dying. And now they're all full health, because Skeeter pops a... Tundra. Let's see if they go for one more fight. Radiant and that one more fight for Secret, once again, will be lacking the big ultimates. Mm -hmm. Black Hole, of course, used by Reza there in an attempt to get something going, but really with the BKBs that Tundra have, if they get it off beforehand, then there's absolutely no chance of Secret killing these cores. 30k gold lead. I mean, full, full item for each hero pretty much coming out now. Radiant's top tower is on the rocks. This is just, it's not a position where we've really seen any teams be able to turn things around when they've been against Tundra in particular. Tundra to get this sort of lead against you, it, it very much is over, unless something incredible happens. Especially when they have this Naga Siren, really. They've looked to be amazing. These illusion carries in particular for Skeeter, right? His CK, his Naga has been a pleasure to watch. Secret, they tried to set that pace early game, but almost never in this game did they actually have a lead. The gold was always actually pretty much in favor of Tundra. A Tundra. Smokes up, and you can feel it. They're ready to go for the finisher here. Hubby, blinking in. All right, walk it down mid. Trying to catch the creep wave or something. Trying to get some sort something. of a distraction, you know, take Tundra away from the push. But oh, some time. The waves are all in, though. She bought him that knee shot. Might be in a bit of trouble once again. Was we'll he probably coming with the vibe out of that sharp shot there from, from Saxon? Any finish him off, they'll go with the snowball over towards Crystalis. Chain Frost comes out from Puppy. Crystalis commits him with the BKB on to 33, but 33 is just so There's tiny. no damage. He barely cares at all that this Pudge is on top of him. Another one for Crystalis will catch on, but 33. Oh, oops. Cleanest combo, but at this point, Tundra, they don't even need to hit these combos. They'll just back off and reset. Not the Ravage into Song that, you know, a sort of blow away secret, but they can afford to mess that up sometimes. They got a 32k lead. Yeah, we don't need it. It's fine, you know? You have to watch out, though, as you see Black Hole back up in 10 seconds. It's gonna have to be a five man. Even then, it has to be a five man. <laughs> don't even feel like they'll have the damage. It's gonna anyway. be a five man, and it's gotta catch them before they press BKB. Yeah. And before Ray Pactor Boy. What's it? Find nine in the trees. He gets the BKB off before the dismembers there. Sexy over poking from the side. He's with the bushwhack. Crystalis, he's getting low. Nine tries to chase him out. Crystalis gets taken down. Nine caught by the fear. See at the side though. They're focusing down. Nisha. Nisha goes down. Four star to the side. Nine caught by the avalanche. Will go down. Secret able to find some sort of semblance of a trade there. They'll take out nine immediately. Nisha does commit in with the buyback. I'll see if there's anything Secret can do here with this minute. But Tundra are without their mid laner. Nisha can never walk up. He just walks in, gets fully focused from everyone on Tundra. And another item coming up for Skeeter in a oh moment. Oh my goodness. More heal prevention, more damage re reduction, etc. Scotty's going to be coming out also for this Naga. Extra illusion as well with the level 20 yeah. hit. And an illusion rune found us. On top of that also. Spectres continue to just see all three lanes push right up to the base of Secret. Secret are going to try and find that. It needs to be an immaculate team fight, five-man black hole. It's just going to be so hard for them to do it anywhere outside of the base. You know, leaving this area of the map, leaving the, you know, the, the some sort of safety of the high ground. It's just so tough against what Tundra is doing on the map right now. Tundra's on cruise control. Look, Snaking's even got boots to travel on the five Marana. Go very much okay, you can see okay. secret i think they know that this yeah. is a spot game one that's tough but there's a long series ahead of them so Let's making sure positive. to keep things like keep Go things ahead. positive and very much still continuing it to give it their all smoked up here zayat some resolution i think most people find it you know you hear puppy like kind of laughing in these type of games and you're like oh okay whew. a heart now for I mean, 33. <laughs> this is a scary place of resolution in zayat 
flushed by to Tundra. I am in the trees. Everyone on Tundra is just so farmed at this point. Pretty much every single hero in corn. So hard to get any, any grab, any toss back. Yeah, Snaking's got bots, Lotus, Force to have drum. I mean, it is a five position Marana, by the way. We've seen some farm supports today. This one is certainly up there from Snaking. Tundra just tend to do this a lot of times too, right? Distribute their wealth nicely, especially, I mean, at this point in this game, of course, when they have all the space in the world, but. Mate, they see 33, but it's. He's got an easy jump. They're going to try. The toss back, but it's just, it feels so no, rough nothing. to try and commit onto this tide. He just Mage Slayer hits them and they do nothing. They've got to back off. 33's toying with the idea of a Ravage as well. Nisha is he getting caught out by the Bushwhack. Will get jumped by nine. He's in with the Warus Punch. The Secret just scrambling back up towards the high ground. And I tell you what, I think they're quite lucky to get out of there with nobody going down. They can't even, I mean, they tickle the tide. This build really from 33 is working perfectly. I, I mean, it's the, unkillable. The Pipe Wraith pack we've seen so many times, but just throwing in this Mage Slayer because he sees that yes. both cores are this magic damage yeah. emphasis. 6, 1, and 21. Exactly what you hope to see from your yeah. offlane. 4, 1, 15. Roshan. Skeeter. Should be another one here for Tundra. Again, these illusions from Skeeter making sure that Secret, they cannot even dream of getting anywhere close to the Roshan. Every lane pushed in. Puppy. Up for a journey, trying to maybe collect some bounty runes. Blinks. We'll be okay, Snaking won't find him. The Roche acquired 40k gold lead. Back to business. Absolutely, just passing by the sort of 1k gold a minute. Something that you very <laughs> rarely see in terms of, of a lead and at this stage of the game. Pretty much a full nullify done as well from, from 9. Even tougher. Try and protect Ooh, that core that gets jumped upon by 9. They're looking to go to. They're smoked. So many of these heroes just get immediately burst down, especially Puppy. With that Aegis, Tundra no. And they can look to get into the I mean, base of Secret. 33's taking the tower by himself. He's I just mean, anchor smashing it. Yeah. He's got the talent. Just let's try for some sort of a hook. They can't stop him. I mean, we'll see Zayas. He's looking for a toss back. Oh, Nine in response immediately on top of him. And that's Zayas gone. No buyback for him. Crystalis. He'll pop the BKB, he's got to use it to step back, get some sort of distance between him and the rest of the team. He's going to try and stand his ground on 33 of 9. Jumps in with the Warriors Punch into the Snowball. Overall, Nisha Rezo, he's going to go for the Black Hole. The song is there. It's healing him. I mean, the Black Hole and damage alone. Not enough to take him out through the BKB. Rezo's out. Does have a buyback, but even if he opts to do so, won't have a Black Hole to use. Tundra, they'll continue this push up towards the top lane. Taking down this set of barracks. A secret. We'll see if they go for one last move. Maybe hope that Tundra gets a bit close to the fountain, but Tundra, they don't mess around. They're not making any mistakes. 33 pops the rabbit. Catches out Nistra and Crystalis. Crystalis getting low. He might just be able to reset this time as he is over towards the fountain. Actually able to live. Nisha also able to keep himself alive for now with the Lotus. The flips the net. The 33 is getting in on top of him. No one else able to get Nisha away from Tundra. He's out for 100 seconds. The tip. Force gone, they're up to the ancient GG is called and Tundra they take this game one and my goodness they take this game one this was not close Tundra in full complete control I mean it felt like after 10 minutes secret they didn't have a chance at all in this one box it felt like even from lanes right the rotations from Soxa kind of putting on this pressure onto Nisha this was a miraculous game, really, from Tundra, kind of put, setting the tempo super early on with the Naga Siren draft. When you're able to kind of get this type of lead early on, and you have a Naga, and you start realizing, hey, we're versus only magic damage, my Tide can just completely counteract it, you know? Absolutely. It's an excellent approach. And I think what's going to feel really good for them is indeed it paid off. You know, as Ali they said, the they wanted to try this game one.